How are we going, everyone? Just doing my late, late prune. It's my summer prune. This should have been done a long time ago, folks. But as you know, I preach a lot and practice very little. And that's not because I'm lazy. That's what I say to my wife. I'm not lazy. I'm busy. Now, this is my uh, peach tree here. I haven't pruned the summer cut down at all. I actually did do a, a couple of prunes, but since then we've had some suckers come on. What I've just cut out there is an actual sucker you'll see coming out of the base. Have a look at that. That's the sucker that's come out and actually grew straight up through the middle of the tree. That's going to be removed. And this time you probably find suckering happening on a lot of trees, uh, especially during the end of summertime when they want to put on the new growth that tends to sucker off from the rootstock. So go around and cut all them out. I'm going to take, cut that out as well. And now the late summer, early autumn prune is basically cutting down the height to a manageable reach, which means you cut it down just below your arm's reach. Don't cut straight up there because that's still too high. This is going to be cut down to here somewhere like that. Take that down and we go around the whole entire tree and do the same thing. And once we've done that, we have to focus on protecting our plant from the dreaded leaf curl. Peach and nectarine are always getting infected and some trees survive without any, you know, us interfering with it and doing any prunes, whilst other trees really suffer a lot and they're always, always reaching the brink of extinction if you don't actually manage it properly. And sometimes you can lose the tree completely from the, uh, the leaf curl inf infestation. So now last year, we started spraying a tree at the beginning of March basically, and the rule that I'm working on and the theory that I use or timing that I use is once a month. At the beginning of each month, easiest way to remember is that you go out there and spray your tree. And I'm talking about the disease control pack that we have, which is to control leaf curl. I did this tree from March last year every month, March, April, May, June, July, August, all right? By September, it was in flowers, I didn't spray. So that's six applications. Now, you know, if you do a little bit of research online and speak to others alike, some will tell you, look, you spray in June only, July, August, maybe once or twice at the end of winter. It's too late. You speak to other, other tree growers and they'll tell you maybe just one application at the beginning and one at the end. It's still not too bad. I mean, it, depending on your environment and how bad and severe the, the spores travel around on, in your garden. In my case here, they get infected completely. So I can't afford just to um, spray it once or twice and thinking that's enough. What I'm talking about there is that when the tree is going into dormancy, now what's happening here, it's going dormant. It's dropping its leaves. So this tree is going to sleep. It's going to go nanny nanny. Good night, see you in about August, September. Okay, now when it does go to sleep, who's here to protect it? And what do I mean by protection? I mean that there's no sap flow, so the sap stops flowing through the tree. So everywhere these leaves fall off, it's not falling off yet, not falling off. Oh, it's fallen, fallen off. See all these little spots here where the leaf connects to the stem of the plant? All these little spots here now are open wounds. We haven't got any band-aids to seal those, have we? And if we don't seal them, bacteria get seen. And what's the most popular bacteria here? It's the leaf curl one. It loves to enter through the sap flow there, hang around on the tree. As soon as the sap flow goes active in the tree, it becomes alive and it starts to kill all the new leaves that come out. That's the entry point all over the tree. So. When it starts dropping its leaves, and that's what I was saying about March last year, 10%, 20% maximum leaf drop, you need a spray. So that's the first indicator for you that you need to look for. Going dormant, spray the tree. You haven't pruned it, cut it down. If it's up there a little bit high, cut it off. I haven't got any, yeah, I'm still talking to you guys, but I've got to cut that off there. And then spray the tree. And that's what we're going to do now. So spray the tree at the beginning of each month and do it all the way to August. Now, I sprayed, in yesterday's episode you saw the little one on citrus trees and leaf miner. I used the CGWS and bluestone copper oxychloride and the uh, seaweed solution mixed in there as well. Well today I'm doing the same thing, which is basically the same day because what you watched yesterday we filmed today and what you're watching today we filmed today, yesterday. Yeah, something like that, you know what I mean. Anyway, so we filmed them both in the same day and I've got the product here. And the only reason I'm saying that, folks, is because I always say at the end of cycle, once you finish spraying your tree, wash your bottle out. Well, I haven't finished spraying my tree, and it's not the next day. It's only about half an hour later. I've gone from one garden bed to the other garden bed, because that's the magic of television. Well, this is online videos. Uh, television, an old dinosaur I was once upon a time. All right, we're going to spray this with the blue stone and the hydrated line. No, there's no hydrated CGWS. This is our trial. I'm sacrificing my trees to demonstrate something and hopefully it works. And if it does, lucky you, you can do it too. So you can mix the two together. Don't have to spray separately. So 
Make sure you're in the right direction, facing the right side of it, you know, not on the, on the downside. And then spray, and I'm talking about the wind, folks. And spray to the point of runoff. Now, this is nowhere near enough. A tree like this will take up to, ah, see what's happened? Ah, oh, fantastic. Ah, I jinxed my sprayer. Yeah, yesterday's video said to you, I don't, you've got to wash them properly and they'll work all the time. And now today, it doesn't want to open and close. And you know what it is? It's this little rubber ring here. It's not inside, right? It's not the inside, that's nice and smooth. It's this little rubber ring here, just on the outside, that sits there under thread housing. That's what causes it to go stiff. It dries out a little bit. So you can take that off, unscrew like this, I just showed you how to do a bit of a troubleshoot fix an issue. Now that rubber ring can sometimes roll over and you can't see what I'm doing but you know it can twist itself and it becomes abrasive against the shaft. So take it off, put it back on again. If you need to you can use a little bit of lubricant um, and to fix that. Otherwise a little bit of a help back to normal again. Look at that eh? Didn't break it yet have I? Uh? Three year old sprayer. Best part of 15, 20 bucks, man, seriously. And you ask me if there's warranties after two years, seriously. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> I have had some emails, people asking for replacements after two years, and there's a photo of the sprayer and it's been beaten to death. This looks like a brand new model, the latest model by comparison to what I've seen. One teaspoon of bluestone and three big heaps of CGWS. This is replacing the hydrated lime but it's also got seaweed solution in it. So we feed, protect, and enjoy all in the one go, folks. A little bit of water. So the mixture rate is for one litre. Just stir that through. There we are, see that dripping there? That's the, to the point of drip and runoff. That's what you want it to do. You need to coat every square milli, micro millimetre on the plant so it doesn't get in there. If you miss it and you do a very light sprayer like from the distance like that and you go, yeah, I've sprayed it. No, you haven't sprayed it. You haven't done anything with it. You're just wasting your time. So spray your trees once a month. Use our disease control pack um, with CGWS. I reckon it's going to be a fantastic way to be able to look after your trees all in the one. So you're not having to spray one week, one product, another week, another product. Do it all in one and that way you combat all problems with the one application and repeat it every month in this case here. Every four to four and a half weeks, which is the average, spray it again all the way up to the point of bud burst. And once it gets to that stage, well, it'll be springtime just around the corner. Check out our website, vasilisgarden.com. You can get all these out there at very discounted prices and enjoy a wonderful garden. From me, Vasily, Maresi.